Today, we're gonna cover the five reasons why you would not move to Norfolk, Virginia. Let's hit it. Hey guys, welcome back to the Living in Coastal Virginia channel. Today we're in my office because it's quiet and it's also really gross outside. The weather's been kind of nasty the last few days. My name is Dan Inman. I'm an active realtor here in the area. I own a small company called the Inman Home Services uh, LLC. And I work alongside my wife. She works in the finance department. If we can help make that transition smooth and easy to the area, give us a call or hit us up down in the information below. We'd love to serve you and your family. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about the five reasons why you wouldn't want to move to Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, I think there are plenty of pros, but today we're gonna focus mostly on the negative or the cons of living here. So number one for me is flooding. Uh, I've lived here for nearly 16 years. Outside of like the flooding when it comes down to like living right up against the water, um, the biggest thing is gonna be driving around town. So whether you have, uh, you know, you're driving down here on like Tidewater and you go off on the side on there on Llewellyn, like that area, you have to literally time it because if it's raining super heavy or the tides are super high, um, you literally can stall your car out. I've seen many, many cars stalled out there. And what that literally means is that you're driving through the water and the water is so high that it goes up into the intake, gets into your engine and kills your car. I think it's called hydro locking. But I've seen cars there all the time. It's one of the reasons we have an SUV. So maybe you need to look into getting an SUV or one of those super cool like snorkel things that go on there. I think they're mostly used for dirt and safaris, but you could look like a badass uh -huh. and uh, you can avoid the water issues. If you're gonna have a house that's close to the water, there are plenty of places along Hampton Boulevard where people have literally gone and jacked their houses up and put a uh, concrete block to avoid like high flood, flood insurance areas. So if you're gonna move into the area, you need to pay attention to what flood zone that you're in and what the potential flood costs are gonna be. Uh, one of a little kind of a tip or trick if you're gonna be looking at a house is see if you can get a recent elevation certificate. Basically a surveyor is gonna come out to the property, um, measure exactly where the house is in relevant relevancy to what's called a firm map, um, a link for FEMA down below. Um, but effectively they're measuring uh, based on the risk profiles that FEMA puts out, how likely it is that your house is gonna be affected by a 100 year or 500 year flood event. Um, and the more affected that you potentially could be, the higher that insurance is gonna become. All right, reason number two that you wouldn't wanna to move to Norfolk. Uh, again, these are some of these are kind of personal opinions. Some of these are just you know collectively amongst me and my friends and, and community, um, or some of it's just researched. But uh, one of the big reasons that people don't move to Norfolk, they'll move to Chesapeake or Virginia Beach or different areas, is gonna be school ratings and crime. Uh, so, like every city has their issues, um, but uh, two ways that you, if you're gonna be doing your research, I would definitely check out uh, niche.com or greatschools.org to see how the school, public school system is gonna be ranking where you're looking. Um, obviously, uh, there are a couple pieces of advice that I give someone who's looking at moving into the area or is gonna be looking at purchasing. Um, one uh, for me is, nothing replaces driving a neighborhood. So if you're gonna be moving into the area, um, obviously it's gonna be difficult. One of the reasons you're watching this video is that maybe you're trying to do your research before you show up. Um, so maybe use that Google street map view and kind of walk up and down the street. If you see the cars parked in the lawns and up on jack stands, um, that might not be the neighborhood that you wanna live in. Uh, if you see kids out playing on the Google streets, if you see people taking walks, if you see manicured lawns, that might be something that you're you know, gonna be potentially interested in. But going and driving in a neighborhood is really gonna give you an indication of something, whether you're comfortable or not comfortable. Uh, and then I find that, I think it's crimemapping.com or org has one, but honestly, I think Trulia has the best crime mapping tool that's available that's out there. You can go in there, plug in the address that you're looking at either renting or purchasing, um, and checking out on the map. And it literally, if, if, if Sean, if you'll insert the photo there, um, it just shows dark, dark blue, has the highest concentration of crime. You know, light, light, light blue is the lowest concentration of crime. And on the right-hand side, it'll show a little indicator of, you know, whether it's larceny or 
or petty theft or things like that. So uh, make sure you do your research. Um, there are wonderful places of Norfolk. I personally live in Norfolk, um, but you wanna make sure that you know exactly where, where you're moving into and that you're comfortable with that. Reason number three uh, for me is gonna be bridges and tunnels. Um, basically to get into Norfolk, unless you're coming from Virginia Beach, you're gonna be looking at using a bridge or a tunnel. I've mentioned this several different times and you can tell it's a sore spot for me, but there are tolls that come along with a lot of these and it drives me freaking bonkers. What's more irritating is when your easy pass doesn't work, but most of the time it does. Uh, you know, there's just gonna be fees, especially during peak times, they charge more for those peak times. Uh, the easy pass is going to save you some money, so make sure you get that, put it up in your windshield where it's easily going to be registered by the scanner. Uh, it's going to save you two to three times the cost of taking those, those tolls. But the biggest thing is going to come from bridges and tunnels is like, you know, let's say a hurricane's coming into the area or a tropical storm. Uh, that's your only exit route. Um, one of the major uh, Hampton Roads bridge tunnel, so one of the major one in and out, they're actually expanding that right now. Uh, they're in the middle of that construction. It's not going to be completed until 2025. I think in November is what they're estimating. It's going to cost $3.8 billion uh, for that construction project uh, to be completed, but it's going to expand it from a four lane to an eight lane um, and create way less traffic. If you're new to the area, uh, because traffic also tends to pile up in those areas, what's the one that's 13 miles long? What's that one called? Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. Yeah, um, so it, they have they have signs that are up that says check gas, but I've literally been in the tunnels when someone ran out of gas and then it goes from a two lane down to a one lane and it makes traffic even worse. So uh, just something to pay attention to if you're new to the area, make sure that you're not at like an eighth of a tank because if you end up in bad traffic and then you end up running out of gas, it could just be a, make an awful situation even worse. So something to pay attention to. Bridges and tunnels here, hate them, but it's just the reality of living in the area. Reason number four, uh, there are no real major sports teams here. Um, you know, we, <laughs> uh, Sean, who uh, is, is the cameraman and editor and uh, keep Dan on track extraordinaire, uh, watches way more sports than I do. You actually run a podcast. What's the podcast called? Frenemies. Frenemies. Fantasy football podcast. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's that's one of his little side gigs. I always feel kind of guilty because I'm the guy who only shows up and then I root for the team that's winning. Most of the time, uh, the team that is opposite of who my friend is rooting for just so I can you know create some rivalry. But if there's wings there and beer, I'll show up. But in general, right, you've got, uh, we've got the Norfolk Tides, we've got the Admirals, um, ODU has their football and basketball teams, and then Norfolk State also has their football and basketball teams. Um, ODU has, in the, I think they sold out um, 60 games in a row. They have like a 22,000 seat capacity uh, there. We haven't been as great most recently, uh, unfortunately, but um, they're, they're okay to go watch. I think one of our biggest games was against Virginia uh, Tech where we beat them, uh, but I think uh, they had like three or four first string people that were out. We celebrated all the same. Yeah, but you've got, so the Tides uh, is over at Harbor Park. Uh, it's a decent stadium, you know, a different decent stadium. Is that what it's called? Stadium? Yeah. Stadium, okay. Uh, it's a decent stadium. I'm personally, I freaking hate baseball. No offense to anybody that's out there. Uh, I just think it's so boring. Uh, the only reason for me to go is to go just hang out with friends, uh, drink some beer and overpriced food uh, that I'm gonna regret the next day. So uh, I'm just not a huge, you know, e or even hockey fan. So the Admirals, I've never even actually been to a game there, but I have a couple friends that are big hockey fans that have gone and watched. Um, interesting enough about the Tides though, they have been ranked in the top uh, four almost every single season out of our division. And uh, out of the, I had to do some digging here because I, again, I know very little about baseball. Uh, there are four major divisions. You have AAA, AA, uh, like went upper and like lower um, league, A, A leagues, uh, <laughs> which we were teasing about like, and it must really suck to be in the minor leagues, not only in the minor leagues, but the lowest ranking ones. But uh, the Tides are in AAA, and they've always been in the top four in our division, which is uh, 20 different teams. So, hey, if you're into baseball, it sounds like you could go and uh, watch a decent team. So again, no offense to anybody out there that's a big baseball fan. Uh, I'm a big old, uh, kind of hit on old, or old Dirty or ODU. Blah, 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 blah.
Old Dominion or Old Dirty as a lot of people kindly refer to it. Uh, yeah, the football, the football team can be um, kind of hit or miss. Uh, the stadium, I think they're looking at expanding from 22,000 to 30,000 here in the next couple of years. It's really going to kind of depend. You know, with COVID-19, um, it's really impacted a lot of in-person events. And so I'm curious to see where that goes. Number five is an interesting one for, for me uh, is going to be that Norfolk has a pretty uh, substantial amount of housing stock that's older. Uh, for the last five years, it's made up of about 17 to 18% of resale. So homes that have sold in the area, about 17 to 18% have been homes that were built before 1930. Um, and that comes with pros and cons, right? So the benefit is that a lot of that older housing stock has a lot of character, right? You have um, arts and crafts period, the colonial style homes, you've got revivals, you've got uh, Vic, you know, Princess Anne Victorian style homes. The downside is that if basically if it's under 300 grand, um, a lot of these homes you know, with all that extra character and care take a lot of money to maintain. You know, if something is bordering on 80, 90, 100, 110 years old, um, it's just gonna take a lot of upkeep and maintenance. Uh, one of the downsides, again, of living in Hampton Roads is that we're kind of on a swamp. Um, that's what a lot of people talk about or joke about is that we're built on a whole bunch of creek beds. And so working in the real estate industry, we'll go through a lot of homes and you'll see, you know, uh, you know cracks in the walls or things like that. Um, but some of that settling is it's just going to happen, right? It's not, you know, oh, oh, they're settling. It's like every house has settling. Uh, but if it's an older home where none of those issues have been addressed over time, you could find some of these old homes that are have been gotten so far past uh, the capacity to save that you really want to be careful looking at older homes. Another one of the things is just knob and tube wiring. Again, it's been there for 100 years. Um, there are some risks. Some, some insurance companies will not insure homes with knob and tube. So just be careful again when you're looking out there, make sure you get a home inspection if you can. Um, you know, today's housing market is, is pretty competitive and so there are more and more homes going under contract without a home inspection contingency. However, uh, if you're gonna have an older home, you just wanna be careful uh, and or try to at least get one for information purposes only so that at a bare minimum, maybe you have to sacrifice your earnest money deposit to get out of that contract. Um, but with old homes comes sometimes old home problems. I personally live in a 1912, um, like what's called a four square style house. It looks kind of like a farmhouse. I love it, but it has squeaky floors. Some of the doors don't shut quite right. It has some old hardware. The other thing I think uh, when it comes to older housing stock or just maybe housing in general in our area is if you're moving from like the Midwest or maybe some of the Southern states or rural areas, you're gonna have a little bit of sticker shock moving here in what 250,000 or even 300,000 or even $400,000 gets you. I remember when Rachel and I first moved into the area and we were looking at buying our first home, um, we looked at what $350,000 bought here versus what $350,000 bought back at, in her hometown in Indiana and where I lived in Texas. Um, and it was substantially different. Like $350,000, $450,000 houses were much, much bigger and nicer there than they were here. Uh, part of that is just that we have a booming um, like military economy here and supported by the port and that type of thing. And so you just don't get as much house here as you would in potentially other places. I have one little extra bonus for you. So a, a bonus one, and my brother actually had walked in uh, to the office and mentioned it, was paid parking and Sean readily agreed. So unlike uh, Virginia Beach and Chesapeake and some of the other surrounding cities, one, we have much narrower streets uh, because the streets are older. Norfolk is, is a much older city than other parts of Virginia Beach and Chesapeake and some of the surrounding areas. Uh, and so some of the, the streets are narrow, narrower um, and there's a lot more paid parking. So over by ODU or downtown or Ghent, um, sometimes they have street sweeping and so you can only park on one side versus the other side. Otherwise you can get some nasty tickets ranked up. So um, it's just a pain in the butt. Uh, fortunately enough, uh, I wanna say a couple of years ago, they installed the uh, card readers. So one of the big things I would run into is I didn't carry freaking coins around because uh, I don't really use cash for much anymore. I usually use, use a card or even Apple Pay or something on my phone. And so I just didn't have like a quarter or something to put into the charge. So I would literally have to run the risk of getting a ticket and just run in and run out real quick. So uh, that would be the top five reasons not to move to Norfolk plus a bonus. 
Uh, just as a reminder, again, my name is Dan Inman. I run Inman Home Services. I'm a local realtor here in the area. My wife runs the finance side. If we can help you and your family move to the area, make it nice, smooth, easy transition, we would love to do so. If you found this video helpful, please hit that little bell down at the bottom, or excuse me, the, the like button down at the bottom. Uh, if you'd like more content like this, the easiest way to do that is to hit subscribe uh, and then the little bell notification to let you know when the newest video comes out. We do try to do at least one, sometimes two of these a week, uh, and we're gonna have other content coming your way. So thanks for paying attention. You guys take care.